because you remember how hungry you are mining the emptiness because I can't hunt mining the emptiness of your stomach. You consider that this might be a great fishing spot. Definitely. So let's, let's take a look after a closer inspection. You can see that the shapes are that of lake trout. They're good eating and plentiful in these parts. So, All right. so remember, you may have very little time. In the... <laughs> <laughs> I know. So like, a few, so just a few attempts. Yeah. yeah, just yeah, just like five seconds. I have. If All you right. can survive in the wild here, you probably. Yeah. You know, in real life, I would not. <laughs> I would definitely not. We are live. Welcome, everyone, to Archaeology Arcade, the online program of the Florida Public Archaeology Network. I'm Mike with FPAN's Coordinating Center. I'm based out of Pensacola. I'm joined once again by my colleague, Tristan, who's based in our office in Tallahassee. Hey, Tristan, how are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm looking forward to today. Me too. And then for today's special guest, I'm so happy, and I know, Tristan, you are too, to have with us today Dr. David Lewis. He's a member of the Confederated Tribes of Grand Ronde, uh, and he also teaches anthropology and native studies at Oregon State University. Dr. Lewis, thanks so much for being on today. Uh, thanks for having me. It's, been, it's yeah, going to be great. Me too. Yeah, so a uh, little bit of background to this game. So the game that we're playing today is called When Rivers Were Trails. It's the winner of the Adaptation Award for IndyCAD 2019, When Rivers Were Trails. It's a point-and-click adventure game about the impact of colonization on indigenous communities in the 1890s. It was actually developed in collaboration with the Indian Land Tenure Foundation, and Michigan State University's Games for Entertainment and Learning Lab, thanks to support from San Manuel Band of Mission Indians and contributions from over 30 indigenous writers, artists, and musicians, and Dr. Lewis, uh, my understanding is that you were actually one of the many contributors to this game. Yeah, um, it was actually sort of developed by Elizabeth Lapinski. I think she's from Michigan State, and uh, she's done. She's a Native American artist, um, and she has game designer, and she has this, this concept of bringing in lots of different folks uh, on the sort of trail to contribute to the game and and i had some a lot of experience in the in sort of oregon area between the columbia river and northern california and so she asked me to contribute quite a bit actually most of the oregon area as well as um parts of northern california so can as you as... can you describe to us kind of what how you contributed what you did what your part in this was well, um, I, yeah, I remember, you know, as a member of the Grand Ronde tribe, we have some 25, 27 to 35 tribes that uh, are part of the sort of tribal confederation at, at the tribe. And so um, that, you know, as a researcher and anthropological researcher and scholar, I've um, looked at just about all those tribes, um, look at the, their culture, got to a little bit of understand their, how to research their languages because there's, you know, four, you know, upwards of 10 languages or more and uh, and have a sort of smattering of it all. I have all the resources I need to if I needed to produce a, a narrative and a context. And then I've also worked somewhat in Northern California with the Talawa tribes. And so I understood their context as well. Uh, so uh, there weren't, there aren't a lot of sort of Native American researchers in this area that are doing the anthropological work that I'm doing, um, and so I, I'm, so I think a few, she she made uh, Elizabeth made um, several requests from several different um, tribes and uh, other scholars, and and some of them may have uh, declined, and so uh, she kept on asking me to do more, and so I just continued extending my research. Uh, I think I did two sets of research with her, producing narratives as as she wanted them to be produced. Um, in preparation for the game. Okay. Yeah, that's that's a, that's amazing, and yeah, so we're looking forward to seeing seeing the content here. So I think what we do have to do is um, we'll go ahead and start the game, and I guess the first thing we have to do is pick which clan we are from. And so can you can you explain what what is a clan and how like culturally what what is that for for uh, native people? Yeah, clans were like families. Um, um, the, that's probably the best uh, way to think about them. Different families that had different um, spirit animals that um, they looked to for guidance in their tribes. And so um, so 
so that that's what the clans are. I mean, and, and generally they're animals. Native Americans are, um, interpret animals as as people. Um, they're actually like community members with us, and and we at time and some people are empowered to speak with animals, understand them better. Um, in fact, many tribal oral histories suggest that animals uh, could speak before humans could, and so they many times you know they give us the, our powers and so uh, we can some people when they became an adult they got the powers to talk to certain animals uh, some people got things like bear power and bear power is pretty significant you know you, you're a very powerful person uh, you know how to you know catch fish really well and uh, hunt really well and you know uh you know, each each of the animals has its own sort of specialties in terms of its power. So, um, and then these some of these clans may go between tribes. So you may have relations in other tribes that speak a totally different language, have a, have a somewhat different culture, that also are part of the bear clan or the bear power clan. So uh, that's what, essentially, in a nutshell, what what these clans are. Yeah, that, I mean, it's so fascinating. And, and is that something that um, we see that you see in terms of all of the kind of North American, uh, Native American tribes. I mean, is that something that's shared culturally? I know, I know you mentioned there's a lot of different languages and, and cultural groups, uh, but is, is that something that you see just all over the place in North America, at least? Yeah, um, the majority of tribes had things like clans. Um, I think there's some different levels of organization of these things uh, if you go across the the americas uh you know the upper northwest coast a coast had a really intricate um clan structure they call it a moiety structure um where people between different tribes uh would only trade people in the same clan or the same moiety so um yeah, I mean, they're. They, I mean, each tribe is going to be slightly different. It's a different mm -hmm. culture. They're not. There's not one all-encompassing mm -hmm. culture that we can say. You know, and if you go across the what we call the United States now, the country, you know, the people on the East Coast are going to have a slightly different uh, perception of the clans than people on the West Coast, mm -hmm. uh, or maybe quite different, quite different um, way of thinking about the clans. Um, but but they but there are these sort of clan structures. Uh, we hear about that for all tribes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so I guess the next big question is, what which um, clan do you suggest we pick? I see there's different skills, like you mentioned, uh, for the different clan structures. What what would you recommend? Um, all of them are pretty good. I mean, I mean, if you look at like what what uh, Elizabeth wrote down here, I mean, the bear clan has warriors with medicinal skills. Um, I play the game a little bit, and so um, the medicinal skills can help sort of heal mm -hmm. if, you, if you get hurt or if you have, um, if you get some sort of illness, which, you know, there are in the game medicines you can buy for healing illnesses and stuff, so that that bear skill would be helpful for that. Um, links, you know, pr protectors of fighting skills, with, so there are times you may have to fight. Mm -hmm. Um, there are places to, to negotiate uh, for, for products, negotiate prices. Maybe you get a better negotiating price for sturgeon. Um, and interesting enough, she didn't put a, there's on this picture, there's no name for the sturgeon besides just sturgeon. She doesn't have a. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Isn't that weird? She left a, yeah. I don't know if this is an old picture or what, but there is no native name for that there maybe she add that on later on where'd you get the picture i don't know this this is just from so this i should mention this uh to people that are joining us on twitch live right now uh first if you, if you have any questions or comments please just use the chat feature and you can add that there but this is just straight from the where when rivers were trails website so i downloaded the game uh, so this is part of the game it's in the game that i downloaded um yeah you, that looks like a placeholder um maybe right she's, yeah she's, she may be continuing to research that to see if there is a name for sturgeon Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a good, that, yeah. Yeah. It's a good point. I was, I noticed that, but I, 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 yeah, that's, that's interesting. Um, so, so I guess, um, you know, anyone would be great. I think a lot of people are going to pick bear because bears are cool, but, uh, but actually, <laughs> I like bears. You know, yeah. Cranes are pretty powerful too. So maybe, 
you know, just pick it an, an odd off one like sturgeon. Maybe nobody picks sturgeon. Maybe pick sturgeon. I don't know. Okay, let's go. Let's go with sturgeon. See what happens. Maybe she gives us the name later on. Maybe we'll find. Oh it. yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe this is a, a one of those mistakes. You know, it's a bug. right? Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, it, it happens. You know, it, we, we all can, make. We mistakes. can get feedback on this. You know, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right, this is you. Move north, south, east, or west by clicking this or your destination. Okay, so this is a click and point game essentially. Okay, your survival depends on your mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual well-being. If you have no wellness, you join your ancestors. Okay, so we need to keep an eye on that. Well, they're, not get, saying die. they're not saying die. They're saying join your ancestors. Join your ancestors. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, well, that's, that's a better way of thinking of it for sure. Um, gather, hunt, fish, and trade for foods and medicines. You will eat food often to satisfy your hunger and use medicines to be well. And one thing I should should mention, there, there are a lot of um, – uh, the, the way I found out about this game was several months ago, uh, a friend of mine who works for the Forest Service, uh, they were sent an email with a link to this game. And so she sent it to me months ago, and, and we, we thought, you know, this would be a great game to do for Archaeology Arcade sometime. And then uh, about a month ago, or maybe two months ago at this point, there was an NPR um, piece that came out about the revitalized Oregon Trail game. So they've they've gone and revised the game to, I guess, incorporate more of indigenous voices and perspectives on the, the classic the Oregon Trail game. Uh, and then you had actually done an interview for that, even though you weren't directly involved with that game, but of course you were with this game. So it, it'll be interesting to see the uh, your your perspective on this game. And, and I'm not sure if I haven't played the new version of Oregon Trail. I don't know, if Tristan, if you have either, but no. it would be interesting to kind of compare that and see um, where they might align and where they might be way off. Yeah, there clearly could be interest. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, um, I mean, there could be some um, parts of the New Oregon Trail game that, that borrowed from this game somewhat in terms of like um, uh, native uh, perspective, which is mm -hmm. a, big, a big one. Mm -hmm. Parts, part of the problem with the old Oregon Trail games is it was all from a, from a, a, a what we call settler or pioneer perspective mm -hmm. and so the natives are, are are basically stereotypes of real native peoples and uh and so hopefully maybe they got some cues from this game well as i recall yeah. they didn't even have much of a role in that original game no no not not really i mean tristan and i we're considered i i've read that we're called the oregon trail generation we're like in between the millennial and the <laughs> the generation x because we grew up on that game and i think you're right Tristan. from what i remember there really wasn't at all all right so we're getting into our, our journey now so it's 1890 good effect yeah as allotment and assimilation reach Minnesota through the Nelson Act of 1889, Native people are forced from their lands to one reservation, White Earth. Uh, Dr. Lewis, can you can you tell a little bit of context for? I don't know how much uh, context this game gives for that, but can you can you tell us a little bit about this? Well, interesting enough, I mean, the uh, a lot of folks um, a lot of folks. Uh, don't perceive of how uh, colonization happened across the West. A lot of people think there was a pro gradual progression from East to West. It's not true. What happened is, uh, you know, uh, there was a claim all the way to the uh, Mississippi first, where many tribes are pushed from the, the east side of the Mississippi to the plains or to, or to Oklahoma Indian country. And then the next big movement was all the way to the West Coast. And so the, 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 the plains area that, that sort of like, uh, I guess the, all the plains um, was settled later. Uh, so Oregon had its settlement and removal of tribes in 1850s, 1856, mostly. Whereas uh, some of the other tribes that were in the plains were not removed until uh, the 1880s or or later. So, um, and and this is a process of uh, which you mentioned is allotment. Um, this is a process of, of sort of giving lands to, to the people individuals on the, on the reservation so they can be farmers um uh but the problem is that most of the lands that were given for the reservation were really poorly um were poor lands not really good for farming so they they basically cast these people into sort of poverty for several generations oh. well and uh, i was doing some reading on this beforehand too there's actually a uh 
there I can link to a great uh, breakdown of this by uh, Indian Land Tenure Foundation. Um, if I understood stood it right too, this was basically just an excuse to take most of that land, as I understood it. Is that correct? That's right. Move yeah. people, you move native people to the worst lands, hmm. the lands that were not desirable for farming or, or ranching or anything like that, and give every, all the good land to the white people. So that was essentially what was happening. Yeah, and it's, it's such a you know terribly sad story to to learn about. I've, I've been reading. I don't know if you're familiar with this book by Claudio Sant called Unworthy Republic. But it really goes into kind of the the bureaucratic detail of removal for you know basically uh, in the 1830s for the southeastern uh, native people and and you know I read a little bit about removal I had known about it um, just from my background as a historian but the the level of detail and and just how horrible it was on a human level uh, is is really shocking. Um, so 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 I and I don't I don't I'll, you know. I don't know a whole lot about the removal in the in the really the West or or in the um, Great Lakes region. So so I'm really interested to hear to see this game and then also to hear your your um, your insight too. Yeah, I mean it was pretty consistent across any, anywhere that was going to be settled to become um, states of the United States. Kind of the same pattern occurred, just different time uh, frame, uh, perhaps slightly different technologies involved. Um, by the time 1890s came along, there was repeating rifles and everything else going on. Mm. And so there was very little, uh, there were very little uh, opportunity for tribes to resist much. There were a few wars, but um, but the United States uh, and white people clearly had the upper hand in, in the removals. Uh, uh, kind of degrading, there was a uh, huge attempts to degrade their food source, like destroy all the buffalo mm -hmm. was a big one. Um, to plow up all their fields where a lot of times they would get their food from the ground um, to continue to push them into the smaller and smaller areas. And some tribes resisted there. I mean, there were a number of any wars uh, of tribes resisting this, um, but um, the United States is pretty effective in terms of like uh, destroying them. Mm. Yeah. Um, and then, so this, I, I guess I picked the Sawyer story. I was I was kind of clicking around. So I guess I picked, I'm not sure if we had an option or if this is just the one I picked, but uh, it says scroll down to read in, uh, interactions and stories as needed. You can always keep track yeah. of your belongings from the upper right corner by clicking and tapping the icon. I guess that's up there. And be mindful of staying balanced while living honorably. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're bringing in native context, like um, this idea of living in balance with nature around you not being imbalanced in the way mm -hmm. you do things and the way you look at the world. And also uh, part of what you want to do is bring context to a lot of uh, interactions of native peoples so that, you know, the people that are going through the story um, gets, get the larger sort of cultural and historic context as much as possible. No. Uh -huh. It says, despite your resistance to being relocated from uh, Fond du Lac, hopefully I said that right, to White Earth Reservation, your land has been chosen for allotment to be taken and given to settlers. You are in a hurry to leave before settlers arrive. Surely armed. Where where exactly is White Earth Reservation? Um, Is that, um, I can't remember, is it in the Dakotas or Minnesota? It might, it might be Minnesota. Maybe it's in Minnesota. It, they had that map. Maybe we can look at that map and try to figure it out. Yeah, the maps don't have the state um, boundaries. Uh, the there, lines, but... right. I'm, yeah, I'm not it's in that area. I mean, the, the states were imposed upon tribal areas. So, mm -hmm. right. Um, yeah, this is a, I mean, there was a process of, of sort of giving reservations to tribes and then maybe the next um, uh, presidential president would change his mind. And, and each treaty had this like uh, provision in them that said that the president could change their mind and, and change the deal in a sense. Wow. Um, and so they, a lot of times, um, you know, especially after allotment, the, the lands that were not under individual allotment to, to individual people would be sometimes um, sold as, as um, public domain land, to mm. public domain land to settlers that new settlers that were coming along that wanted land too. And so um, some, some tribes were able to resist that. 
they kept everything kind of in a public sphere um, in their sort of like community land. And some tribes were sort of divvied up and then they lost land from the reservation by giving it to settlers. That's kind of the story of uh, Oklahoma Indian country too. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of reservations were reduced as more and more pressure came from new settlers came up coming along and saying, hey, wait a minute, I want my mile square piece of land too. Um, I, I should have my opportunity too. And these Indian, Indian people are wasting the land by not using it pro appropriately. So let's reduce how much they have so they can give the rest of it to the white people. Uh -huh. I mean, it's it's just incredible to. I mean, how do you ever trust uh, a group that could just basically say, yeah. "We can change our deal at any any you know at any four years"? I guess we can just. Change. That's exactly right. I mean, yeah. the, what's funny is you know what's interesting is if you read the the actual trees and and just about all of them are online. You can actually read those if you want to. Um, almost always they say, "And this, and we're going to create a permanent reservation for you." Yet, you know, 10 years later, you know, if the if the the president and the Congress decided to take away some of your land and change their deal, wow. they could actually eliminate that reservation that happened to a number of tribes. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It's just, uh... I linked the, the information uh, in the, the Twitch chat has a link to all the different um, acts and it is kind of staggering how much work was put into being just kind of awful because it, there's yeah. a lot yeah. as we're kind of that's important about. i mean it's important to to talk about this stuff yeah. too i mean i, I think um so one, one thing I, I did while we were chatting is i i gathered this so there was i looked inside our our house and there was some tobacco and it it had the the name of it as asami do you know what language that i think i think she's in uh anishinaabe Ashna language. okay okay and, and which then, is, and that's, which and that, is also Ojibwe or Chippewa. Okay. Those are the various names for the same or bands of the same tribe. Okay. And says so now, so now we're looking outside. So we're gathering supplies because we have to, we have to leave. Now we have to leave our home. Um, so we're going to open the barrel. It says your stores from the winter include dried meat, berries, and medicinal plants. I wonder if we can gather both. I would take both if we can. I think you're probably going to just get uh, yeah. one. Just one. Okay. What do you? What do you well, guys go, think? Go, go ahead and try for both, but you know. Okay. What's more important, do you think? I think food is more important than food. Than okay. Yeah. Oh, we can do both. Okay. 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 All right. That's good. Good. You can. You found, you found the secret. <laughs> you can do both. Yeah. Don't don't quit before you grab both. You can do both. Um, you can now heal from sickness during your journey. Um, settlers are, and I I guess that's that's another thing that you know when we think about. Um, Euro-American colonization of the Americas and the introduction of these, you know, diseases that just were, you know, really epidemics and pandemics that that just devastated the the population. Um, but that's not something that really just stopped after the 1500s, correct? That's something that continuously, or or am I wrong? I mean, I, is that something? Absolutely, that kind of absolutely right. I mean, there were epidemics that came through various areas. Uh, I think measles and smallpox were big, but um, in Oregon, um, which we'll see, maybe you'll see later, there was a big malaria ep epidemic. You know, the problem is that the time frame of, of this, uh, this story, this narrative is 1890s. So mm -hmm. the, the Oregon um, epidemics really took place in the 1830s. So, okay. Um, and I guess this is us down here because Fond du Lac, that's where our home was at. And now we're, we're moving west. So I guess I just click on the arrow and we just go, oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, we meet someone, a hunter, Buzhu, maybe I shouldn't try to pronounce, Gibakati Inna, greetings, are you hungry? And this would be in the same language, the Ojibwa. I think she's, yeah, she's using, uh, I think she starts with Anishinaabe uh, okay. language. Okay. Um, so we're going to get into other languages too. And that, that's a cool part about this is stay in the same language the whole way. Yeah. That just made, um, and so, so that makes sense why they had to have so many different contributors, um, right. to this, make that happen. Yeah. It brings this idea of diversity and, mm -hmm. um, different cultures, different tribes, uh, you know, it gets away from the stereotypes of like one Indian right, right. tribe across the United States. Right. The hunter says, of course, we leave it first light. It's important for us to continue to honor traditional ways. I guess we'll ask the hunt. 
may I join you in hunting? Uh, he says, hmm, on one condition, many people have been displaced on these lands and all we've been given are tools for farming. You can hunt with us as long as you stand with the resistance and honor our traditional ways. I say we should join them, right? Yeah, sure. Okay, so I guess they're, okay, so there's actually hunting in this game. Yeah, yeah, there's like mini games. Um, mm -hmm. They're, they're uh, if you haven't done this before, um, uh, the rabbits, I think, move really freaking fast. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> so maybe saying, I won't shoot for them. <laughs> can I swear on here? But <laughs> yeah, that's fine. You do whatever you want. Yeah. yeah. But, but uh, is, some of the animals move really want. freaking fast, and yeah. some animals don't. And they only get a certain number of arrows. So. Oh, oh okay. Okay. Top. Oh, we only have three. That's, that's good, though, because I remember in the Oregon Trail, it's like you just bought a whole bunch of ammunition, and you just, like, shot everything. You know, you which is like a terrible of it back, which yeah, it's like a terrible way to to hunt. I mean, it's, it's so destructive. And so this this is I guess it's, it gets back to that concept that you mentioned earlier, which is balance, you know, finding balance with with uh, life. Um, and I think we we do a terrible at least as in, like, a, uh, you know, an American society, the United States, we, we've we've got a terrible track record of destroying our environment, you know, and then having to clean it up. Uh, as, as best as we can, I guess, when we can agree to do that. So this is nice. This is a nice touch to this game. And All we're right. going to uh, see if your your shooter skills are any good. <laughs> no, they're not. I can tell you now they're not. So I'm going to avoid the rabbits. Maybe that's all there Actually, is. Actually, they're slow here. And, oh, there they go. They're faster. Oh, they're faster, yeah. So maybe get extra points for further slow. shots? Probably not. What's I this? I oh, know. I earned nothing. Oh, there's a time limit. <laughs> oh, the time frame. Oh. <laughs> All right, I was going to say this. slow hunter. <laughs> I think they might kick you out. <laughs> they might. Uh, probably they right. elude you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, now I know that we – what was that, like right. 10 seconds? That was not that yeah, long. Yeah, I know. It was fast. I didn't see a timer. But, but I guess in, in hunting, I mean, a lot of it's kind of waiting around until you finally find, you know, an, an animal, and then you just – you don't have that long, and you usually only have one shot, and if you miss – then I guess you're out of luck. Or if you so. just don't take it. I'm, well, some, like me. some tribes, some tribes actually uh, did not hunt like we do today, where they would go like tramping through the forest looking for something to kill. Um, they actually would set traps and uh, snares, pitfalls. Mm. Uh, would drive the game into the hunters, things like that. Um, so that, you know, we have in the valley here, the Calipuyans would set fire to one end of the valley, and then hunters would be waiting on the other end of the valley for the deer to be running at them. So, mm. um, so yeah, so there's different ways. Right. It's such a, I like that way. I think that's much more efficient. Yeah, I know, right. I, I know out in, um, in our area in Florida, the, the Creek and the Seminole, I believe did the same thing. And, uh, you know, we have the long leaf pine habitat that's been adapted to fire for, you know, probably millions of years, I guess. And I know that was uh, the same kind of strategy was, was utilized. And I think that's, Maybe next time they'll let me try that. All right, yeah, let's move. Um, yeah, I, I call it outthinking the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure where I click to. Where do I go? Hit the W again. Maybe hit the arrow. This or maybe yeah. W, w. Yeah. Maybe you I'm don't trying. Leave it this way. <laughs> you... Do or... I have to? Oh, did I? Maybe because I lost the hunting. Let me. Oh, this try w. clicking your. Oh, that oh, W. Okay. okay. The dub. The the compass rose W. Okay, you notice the discarded newspaper as you walk along. Look, you see an article with a map of land and what is available for allotment. The General Allotment Act has given power to federal agents to divide reservation lands and disperse them to each adult, allowing them to sell and profit from what they could. That seems like a terrible way, you know, just giving that much power to a single person. You know, um, did was that an issue with, with agents being corrupt? Oh, yeah. Um, did they? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, just about every agent that would leave the reservation would be investigated for some corruption. Jeez. And sometimes they were found, like one agent in, I think from the Coast Reservation in Oregon, um, was he stole all of the, the textbooks for the, the school and sold them all. And then he moved down to California. Oh, wow. and, then, and then he sent an a, a, a invoice back to the Indian Department for his back pay. Oh, wow. Jeez. So he had huge balls. Yeah, my God. Yeah, I was out um, in uh, uh, Arizona, in, in Kingman, Arizona, last week, and nearby an Airbnb we stayed at, there was uh, a site called Camp Beale Springs, 
I guess the army set up in 1871. If you read the old signage that they set up in the, I think, late 80s or 90s, it just talks about, oh, they're, you know, they set up an army camp and then they set up the wagon road out here. And that's pretty much it. But then the, uh, the Wallapai, um, who were indigenous, that was in our ancestral land, that was their land that they were being removed from, they put a, a memorial up to the site in 2006 or 2007 talking about how it wasn't just an army camp, it was an internment camp for re removing the Wallapai from, from that area. And I guess one of the, they had a big giant warehouse that they set up there. They're supposed to give supplies to the Wallapai who are staying at that camp. But instead, the officer in charge basically gave them half what they were supposed to get and then sold yeah. the rest of it to the miners mm -hmm. who were settling the area. And then I guess he got caught. But then he disappeared. There's some people think he yep. just went to Mexico. So yeah, as it, it seems like a terrible, uh, I guess they, maybe they knew and didn't care. I mean, uh, you know, I don't, terrible. Well, there, there were um, uh, agents down in California that had control of some of the Southern California tribes on reservations. And for whatever, and for, I guess it's probably been research, but for whatever reason, those agents ended up owning their, the land of the tribes. Oh my gosh. Which is, you know, when in Southern California is now a significant amount of land and significant right. amount of value, probably worth millions of dollars. Wow. And so I hit go, I just kept going, I guess we're kept going west. And so we've run into a trader. He says, Welcome to the timber market. How may I help you? Okay. You recognize that a market is a good place to prepare for your journey. You know, having plenty of food is vital for combating hunger and contributing to your well being. So Especially probably, with your hunting ability. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say we probably should trade, I guess. Let's trade. Uh, I can trade. How, how do you pronounce? Do you know how to pronounce that? Uh, what's the correct pronunciation? Uh, it looks like a, a so, usually a double A means ah, uh, so um, a sima. Okay. A sima or tobacco. So long, like a double A would be long A. Okay. Uh, I need to be able to make it far. It says Indian market. Like it was. It actually would be great if they if she would incorporate into the game. A way to say the words like a, a oh a, yeah that would be great pronunciation yeah do you know that technology definitely exists now maybe the technology uh, this game audio. came out in a couple years ago but i know it's yeah. more common now because my my four-year-old daughter we have a couple apps for her and uh she's able to like and my son too for just different language apps and you can actually you know say the word uh, into the app and it will tell you if you got the pronunciation correct or not so yeah, yeah that's a great that'd be a great addition sure it will definitely would help me and that's for sure hmm. you'll surely need meat definitely you need meat uh, safe travels friend so i guess we got we got some food yep okay it's a medicine for food okay well good thing we brought that medicine but yeah we need i need to get better at hunting oh and i guess we need to watch this so our well-being wow we're already halfway down we didn't start full, I don't think. Oh, we didn't? Oh, okay. Okay. I, I've never seen a place in here when, when I was playing where you actually eat. Oh, yeah. They just like automatically have you eat. Oh, okay. Probably as you move, I suppose. Maybe, yeah. Uh, Oneida Traveler. I suppose you didn't expect to see... An, am I pronouncing that correctly, Oneida? Oneida, yeah. Out this way, I am headed west from the reservation in Green Bay, so that's uh, Wisconsin area. We have been told our allotted lands have been moved once again. So I guess the point is, is showing that this was happening to many groups at the time. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there was actually a westward push uh, as more and more settlers came in through the east. Hmm. Uh, okay. So we're telling them that we've, we've moved. Thankfully, that is close. We are originally from New York. Wow. But they promised us land in Green Bay. Now that we are flourishing, we have to again... And that's like you were mentioning earlier. They just kept on moving them out whenever a new president would come in, just that's change right. change it. Yep. A lot of the Eastern tribes ended up in Oklahoma Indian country or other places to the, to the um, West. Mm. It says, consider joining us in San Francisco if you make it that far. So, wow, San Francisco. So when they, when they had to, were they literally walking there or are they, how are they, are they using the rivers? Um, I guess, the they, by this time, I mean, there was railroads across um so they could have gone by railroad or by you know horse or you know cart or whatever mm -hmm. some people could have walked clearly mm. right i think with uh 
the Oregon Trail takes nine months uh, by wagon to, to wow. get across. So nine months. Wow. On the bank, you see dark shapes drifting and darting here and there beneath the surface of the waters. You remember how hungry you are, mining the emptiness because I can't hunt. Mining the emptiness <laughs> of your stomach, you consider that this might be a great fishing spot. Definitely. So let's let's take a look. After a closer inspection, you can see that the shapes are that of lake trout. They're good eating and plentiful in these parts. So, All right. so remember, you may have very little time. And then... <laughs> <laughs> I know. So like, a few, so just a few attempts. Just yeah. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, just like five seconds. I have. If All you right. can survive in the wild here, you probably. Yeah. You know, in real life, I would not. <laughs> I would clearly not. You notice that some of the smaller trout are coming up into the shallow pool near shaded rocks to eat water bugs. If you unravel your net and position yourself just right, you can easily, easily fish with the shade covering your shadow okay so i have to not show my shadow so let's fish okay catch fish with your sp oh, i'm using a spear okay. okay you're spearing the fish nice oh okay you well that's gonna be hard <laughs> <That's> gonna be <laughs> <laughs> can i just go for the net instead you only get one try oh wow fishing is about being patient well that's the thing like i was trying to be patient with the, the rabbits but then that didn't work so maybe I have more time with this. We'll maybe. see if there's an indicator too. We'll find but, out. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I guess I don't have to worry about my shot. Oh man, this is gonna be tough. Oh, that's a big one. They're moving fast. Oh, I think I got him. Yeah. Oh, you got him. I got it. Hey. I did it. Oh my it. gosh. <laughs> you, okay, you come are, on, guys. You are a born fisherman. I'm a I'm a I'm a fisherman, not a hunter. You know, I, I not known for, Okay, <laughs> okay. So we have an option between going west or south. I think we go uh, need to go west because the game takes a quite quite a while to get through. So okay, let's go, west. Mm -hmm. let's go west. I like that idea. You feel a drizzle of rain. Oh, we can cook. Oh, we do. Our, we are going to eat. Okay. Uh, we probably need to eat then. Yeah. After you... two days of walking, let's go. <laughs> two days of walking and one trout. <laughs> yeah. But we have lots of medicine, <laughs> just in case. You find cover and enjoy a meal while the storm passes. Okay, excellent. Yeah, I like I like uh, waiting for the storm to pass. I don't like that. Uh, so I guess now we can just go south, and we're going mm -hmm. to Chippewa. We're going into Chippewa. Okay. An elder is cautiously looking beyond her wigwam to see who is approaching. You were raised understanding that it's important to always be respectful to elders. And can you? And, and of course, a wigwam is is this structure behind behind her, right? Yeah, here. it's a house, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And as you mentioned, you know, depending, you know, it's not. I think, you know, maybe not so much today, but certainly. I'm sure some people still do have that kind of stereotype of, of, you know, just Native Americans being one cultural group. But of course, uh, there's there's lots of different cultural groups and tribes and that with different languages and obviously uh, cultures, but also, um, you know, how they how they built their homes would kind of would, would could differ quite a bit, depending on what environment you're in, I guess. Um, yeah. So should we greet or listen? Uh, let's let's listen i think that yeah you're yeah let's listen i think it's tell it's hinting that yeah. <laughs> she you tells you listen first <laughs> <laughs> that's what my my teachers in elementary school would always remind me of i need to shut up and listen she tells you a story about how the jingle dress came from that you said yeah, you said to, uh, to the Ashna, ashnanabeg is that how you ashna uh, ashna I can't even say it now. You messed me up. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. An Anishinaabe. Okay, there we go. I'll, I'll try not to mess you up. Uh, okay, so, um, all right. I guess a gift. I give her a gift. You prepare a warm meal for her. So probably trout. She returns your kindness by giving you a blanket you can travel with. All right. So that all improved right. your well-being, I think. Okay. And can, and can you talk about, Dr. Lewis, about gift giving, was that like what we're seeing here? That's essentially what this is, right? That's actually a cultural thing all tribes have, you know, basically giving gifts and stuff. And, uh, you know, when you meet people for the first time, um, there's always kind of an exchange of gifts, which is kind of an exchange of goodwill, mm. stating you have good intentions, you're not going to attack them and, and be violent with them. And that's, uh, that's kind of one of the problems that settlers had is they didn't see native people as anything but savages mm -hmm. you know in their own stereotypical mind and so they would not give gifts to, to the native people so that sort of broke that code uh and, and it caused the natives and many times to, to react violently to them 
you know um so yeah, we see that in in the stories of jedediah smith and other travelers in the area where there was um lots of conflict because they were just greedy they didn't want to treat the native people as as equals and as actually sovereigns in their area at the time right uh, you see a long path before you start walking towards another place all right onward so we, we are starting to head south um, okay. by 1890 sovereign native nations in minnesota have entered legal agreements with the united states these treaties cede land in hopes of protecting traditional ways of life but this leads to more land loss as railroads open up access to settlers this is especially the case around minneapolis which is south of the mill Lacks reservation have either of you ever been to uh, minnesota minute i've only been there once and i like was just like there for a night I've been to Minneapolis. Uh, I think there was a conference there, mm. but I was I was only there for like a day or two. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, similar for me. It was a family trip to visit some relatives or something. No. I don't remember much. Oh, south. Sorry, I need to. I need to get used to hitting the. Or running out of food. food. Oh running no! <laughs> headed, yeah, <laughs> so you said in the direction of. Leech Let's do a Lake. trade. Trade. Okay, I like or, that. Or we can talk about white or to, or either one. Okay, maybe we can maybe we can do both. Let's see here. She says, Anin, greetings, Najiwik. Yeah, I wish they that would really be a nice feature to this. If if when we could get points, maybe they could do like a point system where if you get it correctly, you would get like some points or something. So that'd be nice to to be able to actually pronounce it. I was recently forced off my land in Sawyer and I've heard Ashinanabek are traveling through Leech Lake on their way to White Earth. How is it there? Uh, she says, greetings, life is good and not so good. There have been many changes around here. We have been driven off of much of our hunting lands and been ordered to stay in the village. I still go where I please. Okay, let's ask about Indian agents, I guess. We, yeah. we had talked a little bit about them. Let's see what the game says. You asked how she travels with Indian agents around. Uh, she says, there are no official laws where we live, but they will take your belongings and do worse. Jeez. You continue on your way. Hmm. Well, I, yeah, I guess that you know they're they're making a short and succinct point that these guys were pretty corrupt. Little wild strawberries catch your oh, let's gather. Gather definitely need food. Yeah. yeah, being low on food. Yeah, you gather small berries which are ready to be eaten. Oh, this may be another game or no? Well, let's uh, see here. Oh, oh, okay. Here we go. So if you click on. Oh, strawberries more it, more background information yeah. right yeah so this is written by tash tashia hart um she says also known as the heart berry strawberries are high in flavonoids and oh gosh phytonutrients, <laughs> phytonutrients. Yeah, you got okay it. there we go i remembered something from <laughs> biology in ninth grade which contribute to heart health they are a natural uh, mood elevator and an excellent source of vitamin i love strawberries they're yeah. like the best fruit i think oh they have the wrong yeah. word there Oh, they do. Oh, where, where? Elevator. Oh. It should be elevator. <laughs> oh. Ele <laughs> it's like a natural move. Oh, that's elevator. funny. That's I funny. want to go to the top floor. Top, <laughs> floor 10. Is what I want to go to. You know, one thing we've we've been using, we've been doing a lot of monitoring of sites out in the field lately, and, and uh, we've found this app called Seek, and it uses machine learning. And basically, you can scan any plant or animal with your phone through the app, and it will tell you exactly what species it is. Yeah, there's so, a number of them. I think there's about a half dozen of these plant net apps that you can yeah. actually take a picture of and it'll tell you what it is. Yeah, it's, it's really incredible. Cool. They're, they're they're pretty pretty accurate from what I can tell. I don't know if I I don't think any of them tell you whether you can eat them or not. Probably because of liability <laughs> in <laughs> case it's wrong. <laughs> so so I haven't ever tried to eat something that I didn't know it was for sure. But uh, this is a community from Ashnanabek from Mill Lacks are hard at work in the sugar bush. They too, they are too busy to notice you nearby. So I guess we should, should we should greet them. Sure, sure. Okay, let's do that. It says greetings, boss, booze, who? Is that how you? Booze who? Booze who? Okay. I have traveled here from Sawyer. It's good to see you are working the sugar bush. I wonder what sugar bush is. Um, one of the women regards you with concern. We've heard about the changes up north. We can share maple. Oh, it's maple, maple syrup with you if you work along. Absolutely. I love maple syrup. Let's do it. 
So they, they if you look at the tree, it looks like there's a little spout where it's probably gathering. Oh, yeah. Mm. Uh-huh. Right here, right there, and over here, too. Okay, and then there's these little containers. So let's click on sugar bush and learn more. Oh, wow. Sugar yeah. bush written by yeah. Lai Boyd. The sap of maple sugar trees flows late in Anibana Jeezy's hard crust on the snow moon, also known as March. Okay. Maple sap has nourished the Anishabi for generations since before colonists arrived with metal kettles that made the boiling process easier. Well, it's tempting to drink the sweet. Um, Good luck with that one. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> Maple sap. <laughs> I saw I that word. I'm like, holy. Zinzi Bakwadawabu. Maybe that, I don't know. That comes from the tree on the spot. Anishan, uh, Anishinaabe. Anishinaabe. You need to learn, practice that one. I know. I, I'm, I'm going to, I, you know, it's funny as I, well, I guess not funny, but I tried to practice it before this game started, but it, I'm having a hard time. Ancestors knew that the sweetness would be better concentrated, preserved, and stored ah, for use all through the year. Um, maple sap was traditionally boiled in birch bark containers. Okay, that's what those containers were, birch bark containers, until it became thick. The moisture from the water and the sap kept the birch bark from burning as it hung over fire. Once thick enough, the... I guess I can scroll. click it again. Oh, oh. You, can, you, you can pan down, I think. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, click and scroll. Yeah, the scroll nearly away. solid sugar would be poured into a wooden trough carved from the trunk of a tree and ground by hand into granules. The resulting sugar would be packed into cakes or cones, used as food seasoning, or even added to water for sweet tea. Hmm. Oh, cool. I love how they, they explain um, how these plants were utilized. That's great. Yeah. Like That's a yeah. nice, nice touch. And then uh, one thing too uh, that I guess is is an issue, um, especially for for the tribes that were you know pushed onto these reservations, and then um, you know they're almost like cultural genocide where they they these these mission schools really tried to turn them into uh, you know like white Americans kind of cultural you know getting rid of their cultural traditions. Can you talk a little bit about that you know what that's done in terms of um, you know, learning like processes like this, kind of traditional ways of, um, you know, collecting resources and, and the knowledge about about that. Yeah, um, I think that um, generally what, what happened is, um, is as people were moved on to reservations, they were dissuaded from doing the traditional arts and, and because they were, because the, the whole mission of the Indian service was to sort of um, assimilate and, and create uh, essentially white people from the native people. So what was thought is if they, put, they picked up um, sort of European style farming uh, through farming and through, you know, missionization, like uh, conversion to Christianity, they become civilized. And so, and all these other native art forms like, uh, you know, like, like getting sap from the maple tree were actually picked up on by a lot of um, settlers as a new industry that they can get into maple syrup and and so the dissuasion of native people from doing this was kind of an economic uh decision you know they wanted mm. to eliminate their competitors on the market so the people were moved away from the traditional lands or traditional uh, places where they would do this activity were made into into farmers and their culture was dissuaded for the by them but the same things were picked up on by um, settlers. And so there you go. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So this is, uh, I guess this guy's our cousin from Wolf Clan. So let's, I guess we'll explain a little bit about that. Explains what, how, what cousins mean in tribes. Okay. Uh, this, and this is written by Joe Tallchief and Lai Boyd. Before Ashinanabe came to Mrs. Anishinaabe. Say it again. Uh, Anishinaabe. 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 There you go. Anishinaabe. Came to Miso Zaganagan, Millie Sacks Lake. The Dakota people lived there and considered it a very sacred place. Um, they called it, uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. You have... It looks like Mede Walken. Spirit Lake. Oh, here, oh, no, here it comes the test again. Ashinanabek. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> I need to. <laughs> and the Dakota fought over the land, but eventually came to council. Most of the Dakotas moved south and west, but those who left Millie Lacks taught 
Anishinaabeg, the songs and ceremonies needed to properly honor. Uh, this is like Medim Wakin. Medim Wakin before they left. Some of the Dakotas even stayed behind and became Tristan. Your turn. <laughs> your turn to try to pronounce. Uh. No. <laughs> Anishinaabe. Anishinaabe. Yeah. Anishinaabe. Uh-huh. Those who stayed were named Miingan or Wolf Clan and continued to share their knowledge with Anishinaabe. That, that, that's good. You can drop Better? the G. I think you can drop the G. Most people yeah. pronounce it. Oh, uh, okay. An- Anishinaabe. I think she's got the, the other thing that uh, another suggestion may be to explain why there's different spellings of the word. Mm. Okay. Because uh, because they're because they're all the same word, she just dropped the e on, on the g on some of them. So, what why is that? I mean, is it just her? Uh, there's it, various it's... linguistic spellings and, okay. and sort of common uh, ways of doing it. You know, some settler accounts that have different spellings, things like that. Okay, and then so and is this like I guess this is referring to people, and then down here it's to the language. Is that correct? Yeah, there's the right. There's Anishinaabe people, Anishinaabe. Looks like the Anishinaabe means the people. Okay. Uh, and then Anishinaabe is the language. Yeah, because okay. it says words, so that's that's okay. That makes sense. The Millilax band proved uh, to be the nexus between Dakota and Anishinaabe culture. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> the band so ceremony. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. It's also not Millie. It's Mill. Mill. Okay. Thank you. It, it's mill. a French. It's a French word. Uh-huh. Okay. And it could be just lock. I don't know if they pronounce the S. Okay. Okay. No lock. No lock. The band ceremonial drums have Dakota origins, and its songs are even Dakota tunes with Anishinaabe words. You got it. Hey. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I just said that G was just really just my, you. my. It only took my, half an hour. <laughs> my, <laughs> my my English speaking brain is just just <laughs> no good. It's no good. Neither is my hunting. Uh, greetings, uh, friend. Good to see you here. What brings you down this way? Uh, allotment has reached Fond du Lac. The land I tended to has been taken. I'm sorry that you have been displaced. You can stay at least long enough to fish or hunt. Oh, okay. This is my redemption. This so is we, need, we need food. So we eat hunting or fishing. Which one? I think, hmm. well, my track record is better with the fishing, but I think I feel like I should give it another shot. You should do hunting hunter. again? I should try it. Don't you think? Oh yeah, it'd yes, just be definitely. faster this time. <laughs> <laughs> it'd be funnier. Yeah, it'd be funnier. Yeah. So those, but, those bunnies are, are fast. Yeah, say. it'd be funny. Oh, deer. Oh yeah, deer. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Get oh, it. did I not get a critical shot? Maybe that's one yeah. more. Get oh. oh get that deer, get uh, it. I hit it, but I guess it I think must you were be, ahead. Yeah. If yeah, maybe I just missed. It flashed, <laughs> it flashed like you hit it. It but... flashed like I hit it. So here's my thought. So when you see the animal, <laughs> you can actually it's showing the some of the organs on the you inside. Gotta hit, of you you. got to hit the organ. I think mm-hmm. that's what it is. I think I get a hit heart or it, something. Yeah, yeah trying to get ahead of it. So yeah. yeah, so I I wounded this poor animal. All and, three of uh, them. All three actually, of them. <laughs> actually, I think you missed them. So oh yeah, like, okay, well, I probably did. You're probably like, right. They suck. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Usually, usually, Tristan is the one doing the gameplay, and I make fun of how terrible he is. At this. this is <laughs> a like, great yes, reversal. I love not, this. I know Tristan's really relishing in this. He's having a good time. Don't worry, I'll get you back. The oh, next I know. Game, I'll, I'll get you back. As you walk along, you notice a few tall cedar trees. When you get closer. You see that they are surrounded by poison. I hate poison oak. Oh, you could. This is this is where the medicine comes in. You're gonna get oh. something. Go ahead and just oh, let's see oh, if we can get. Yeah, yeah we can gather get it. it. Okay. We'll get poison so, oak. Let's, let's get that. Okay, gather it. You carefully gather a few branches of cedar after offering tobacco. Okay. Uh, you missed the poison oak. Good job. Oh. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I'm terribly allergic to poison ivy too. In real poison life, oak, I, I just awful. yeah, oh, it's terrible. I yeah. had it a couple. I times. was just walking through poison oak yesterday. Oh, that doesn't it? Does it affect you? or doesn't it affect you. Some people it doesn't. It does. Uh, uh, it does. I, I was walking very fast. <laughs> <laughs> does Apparently that work? I'm faster than the plants. <laughs> I, I'm gonna try that next time in the woods. I'm just gonna run. I'm just gonna close it's my eyes and run. Speed. I'll walk the speed of the oil, basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I well, I, I I made sure to wear long pants. Ah, mm-hmm. so, uh, there you go. Yeah. So make sure you you wash those pants as soon as possible. Mm, right. Otherwise, the oils could get on your skin. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
a native woman is interested in trading with you, she explains that her husband and sons have passed on and getting a proper meal is hard these days. She offers you bear root, which is good for curing sore throats, colds, and even the flu. Well, I say definitely agree, right? I mean, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. You're gl glad to acquire bear root. Your grandmother used to give this to you to chew when you were little. Yeah. So I really do like this aspect <laughs> of the game where it's teaching you not just the history, but also the, uh, the ecology of these areas. All right. And we, we've actually, we're almost at our hour. We've got only we five minutes left. So I don't know if we're going to make it all the way out to Oregon. It maybe takes can... a couple hours to get to Oregon. Oh, does it really? That's oh, yeah. yeah. Maybe we can have you come back on and we can eventually kind of get out, get out. We'll have, we'll episode two. Yeah. yeah. Episode two. That'd be fun. <laughs> and maybe by well, then. Maybe, I'll... maybe you can prepare it ahead of time and get to Oregon <laughs> first. Then we can go through Oregon. That's a good oh, idea. You know actually. That's a great idea. Yeah. Cause I can just say, I can save it and then we can start off. Yeah. I, I would love to do that. If you'd be down to do that with us again. Sure. No problem. Great. Uh, so you see us youth who you recognize from trading gatherings between your community and Leech Lake, but there is something different about him. His hair is cut short, a sign that he has lost a family member close to him. He remembers you and is eager to talk with you. Uh, so I guess let's just listen. That's what we started doing the last time, right? Yeah. Um, do you know the story of Ma Ingan? So click up there. Oh, on the right. Oh, right, on right here. On gotcha. The, I'll tell you the story. But yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. Written by Ch uh, Joe Tallchief. Uh, Ma Ingan was the first animal, a wolf, and he walked alongside as Gichi Manido made our world for us. The water, the trees, the wild rice, and all the animals. Gichi Manido made people last, but loved people so much that Ma Ingan was asked to help. Finally, Ma Inga came to... Uh-oh. <laughs> Oh, no. Ashen in the bag. Oh, my God. Ashen in the bag. <laughs> oh, man. Ashen in. Oh, man. Anishinaabe. 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 going to be a quiz later. I know. I've, I, I'm going to pass it. If it kills me, I'm going to pass. Anishinaabe. Anishinaabe. And said, Anishinaabe. I have. Anishinaabe. 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 I have a gift for you, but you must pr promise me something in return. Anishinaabe said, Iwa. Uh, Ma Ingan said, you must take care of all the animals on this planet, for they are your relations. Oh, that goes back to what you were telling us earlier. Exactly, about how, right. Yeah, exactly. You must take good care of them as if they were your relatives, because they are. Anishinaabe agreed, and they would take good care of all the animals. And so Ma Ingan opened his mouth, and a dog came from out. His gift to Anishinaabe. Okay, so that, that's a really interesting. Um, I'd like to uh, add yeah, real quick, Mike, that chat yeah, is starting ahead. to hassle you over your oh. pronunciation. <laughs> pronunciation. Anishinaabe. That's what Rachel tells me to yes. slow, slow it down. Okay, so I guess we should give him a gift. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so we gave him some tobacco. And he, food, you know, right? he gives us some maple candies. That's what we needed, some, some candy. Food. All right. Yeah food yeah very important all right so you're hunting no definitely not so we should probably go west can keep going west sure. oh we gotta hunt <laughs> okay <laughs> good all right come on now hit right. it right in the center now right in the center center maybe it'll be close oh no not i got one get him get him, get him. oh i think got i him. got it i think i got him you There's got two. two yeah oh squirrel oh, that's gonna be okay stupid squirrels ah, right here missed. here Oh, missed, missed, the deer. Yeah, missed the deer, but yeah. I got the, I got the rabbit. The you rabbit two, was easy. Two rabbits. Two rabbits. That's better than what we had, right? <laughs> That's <laughs> your nothing. best hunting trip yet. Yeah. Tristan, next, next time I'll give you controls and you can shoot oh, the rabbit. You can fine. shoot that. I think you're doing a good job. <laughs> <laughs> you realize that moisture has crept into your pouch of medicines. They need time to dry. Oh, the sun is high, but so is the wind. Drying will be tricky. I guess we'll just try to dry it, right? Yeah. yeah. With great care, you place the medicines atop a warm rock to dry in the sun. Despite your best efforts, the wind moves them, but you manage to recover the preserved ones. Well, so you lost. So you probably lose. You probably yeah. lose some medicines. Yeah. Well, okay. I mean, we're not we're not doing terrible. 
Still, right? If you look at our well-being, our foods and our medicines, we're not. Our well-being's good, yeah. Yeah. We're we're pretty good. I mean, we've made it pretty far too. I think what what we'll do is uh, we'll go west and we'll see this one, and then we'll probably have to wrap it up. Um, you see a turtle slowly moving along. Let's look. As you watch, you remember your auntie telling you about how the Great Lakes are the heart of a turtle of all Anishinaabe are carried on. So this is getting to the story of Turtle Island, the way the, way the okay. whole land is actually called Turtle Island. Okay. For some tribes. A turtle written by Lessons of Our Land. When a flood came to Aki, Earth, the trickster Nana Buzha, Banana Bazhu saved himself and a few animals by floating on a log. He and many of the animals tried unsuccessfully to dive down and grab dirt to recreate the land. Eventually, despite being teased, Muskrat succeeded, giving up his life in the process. This land was put on the back of a turtle and grew into the island, which became known later as the Americas. And you mentioned this is uh, a story that's shared by many different. Yeah, many uh, tribes. I think this is an Eastern story. I don't, I don't hear necessarily the same thing for the West, but this idea that that the, the Amer North America is Turtle Island. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Mm. All right. Well, we've gotten we've gotten pretty far. I, I, it's hard to tell from from the map, like right. the scale or anything, right. but. Yeah, we I guess we got a long ways to go for sure. Do, yeah, yeah, but yeah, I mean, we'd love that. What, what I can do is maybe for part two, um, I can number one practice my pronunciation of <laughs> of many <laughs> different words. Anishinaabe, <laughs> yeah, for yeah. sure. I won't ever. Oh well, I, I'm going to keep practicing. That's for sure. Um, but yeah, we'd love to have you come back on. And I, I don't know if there's anything you got going on that you wanted to mention be before we before we had to wrap it up here. But I know you do have. Um, a blog site that people that can actually go to for, for some of your writings. It's ndnhistoryresearch.com. Is that still a good site for people to, to check yeah. out some of your writings? Yeah, I have over 450 essays on there um, related to the tribes of Western Oregon, mainly some of Northern California. And uh, I try, really try and get down to, uh, you know, shorter histories. You can read them maybe, you know, 15 minutes that um, detail information about the tribes that really are not in history books yet. Um, so I don't really think that our histories are really well written right now because uh, most of them are not written by native people. And so we're getting back to this idea of perspective, this idea that our histories, our perspectives on our histories have never been written down mm -hmm. in an appropriate way. And so I'm, I'm sort of doing that and it's all publicly available. Mm -hmm. So, and I did that intentionally because uh, for one thing, I don't have to worry necessarily about public publication, you know, editing and stuff like that. I can just write out my own stuff, and then, um, then and then educators can use it to um, uh, to teach classes about the tribes of Oregon, uh, where they don't really have a lot of materials uh, available to them right now. Yeah, that's a, that's a great. And what I'll do is uh, eventually this video will be put up on our YouTube channel, so I'll put all that information to to your blog site. Uh, on, on, up on there under the comments section mm -hmm. or in their description section. And Tristan, you said that this game actually had some uh, lesson plans that they wrote for it? Yeah, there's actually quite a lot of really good and detailed reading um, I'd recommend people check out. We'll also put up um, the link to the, the itch.io uh, for the actual game itself. So if anyone wants to check that out, uh, it'll find you'll find it there. Yeah, we'll put that up there. Um, so yeah, I think I think we've got another archaeology arcade scheduled for next week. So if people want to check that out, um, the best way to find that information for the next events that we have uh, for archaeology arcade and all the other public program that we do in the Northwest, uh, just go to our Facebook page. You can either go to uh, Northwest Region or North Central, and you'll find all that information on there. You can also go to our website fpan.us and you can just click on the events tab and, and we'll usually put those up down there but uh yeah thanks again dr lewis we had a, you yes, know this was you. really eye-opening uh for for me especially i think this is a great game and i look forward to, to playing through some more of it especially if you're willing to come back on and and uh you know tell us all, all your all the knowledge that you have um especially. yeah well, let's hope it doesn't take nine months to get to oregon anymore <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah i don't know you know some of these this game might go on along i think there's so much to talk about that we probably could but yeah but yeah thank you <laughs> but yes. yeah again we really appreciate your time uh and, and we look forward to having you back on i i'd appreciate it thank you